Hello and welcome to part two of topic seven on the optical properties of polymers. In this part we're going to look at general transmission of light through a material and how we have the various aspects of reflection, absorption, and transmission as light passes through a material. In general, if we have an initial intensity of light entering into a material, we're going to have an initial loss of light, I sub R, due to reflection of the light. In addition, as the light passes from that this one surface of the material to the other surface, there's going to be absorption of that material. And that absorption is equal to I naught, the amount of non-reflected light intensity, times the exponent of negative kx, where k is the material constant and x is the distance passing through the material, or the thickness of the material. The remaining light, I sub t, is tra then transmitted out the back side of the material. Let's look at some ways of calculating these various aspects of the light intensity. First of all, we have to realize that there's all kinds of things going on when light enters into uh, a material. First of all, we have the initial intensity of light I, some of which will be reflected. The amount of reflected light is, the, is rho, the fraction of reflected light, times the initial intensity I. You then have some amount of light which is absorbed, point B, and then some amount of light which is transmitted. That's the initial, that's the uh, initial absorbed light. And then you're going to have some light reflected, known as the internally reflected light. This light then returns back to the surface of the material and produces more reflected light as it's transmitted out the surface. There is then further internal reflection which allows for further transmission of the light and so on until eventually all of the light intensity is absorbed by the material. We can calculate the total transmitted light, the total reflected light, and the total absorbed light as well. Let's first look at reflected light computations. The light reflected off the surface of a polymer is a function of the index of refraction, absorption of the polymer, and the wavelength of light. <coughs> In general, the reflected light intensity is equal to the fraction of light reflected times the initial intensity of the light coming into the material. And the fraction of light um, reflected is equal to this equation which involves the index of refraction n and the absorption index x. The absorption index, excuse me, is equal to k, a, a coefficient of absorption, which is a material property, times the wavelength of light divided by 4 pi, as shown here. Also keep in mind that the index of refraction can also be a function of wavelength of light, as was shown in part 1. But for many polymers, we assume that the index of refraction is constant. <coughs> so, next, we have the initial absorbed light. The absorbed light is equal to the intensity of the initial light times the absorption coefficient minus I sub R, or the reflected light. This is also equal to the initial intensity of light minus the transmitted light minus the reflected light. Because keep in mind that the transmitted light, the reflected light, and the absorbed light have to add up to the initial intensity. In turn, this is equal to I, the initial intensity of light, of 1 minus tau, the transmitted light coefficient minus IR, the reflected light. Where alpha is the fraction of light absorbed and tau is the fraction of light transmitted. The light transmitted to a depth x is then given by IT of x equals the initial intensity of light minus the ref reflected light times the exponent of negative KX. And as we showed earlier, the reflected light is I times rho naught so we can rewrite this equation as I times 1 minus rho naught times the exponent of negative kx. Therefore, the absorbed light, is e returning back to this equation, is equal to 1 I times 1 minus the transmitted light minus the reflected light. The internally reflected light is equal to the light transmitted to a depth equal to the thickness of the polymer D times the fraction of light reflected rho naught. So now the reflected light is equal to rho naught times tau times I. Therefore, we can take the transmitted light is equal to 1 minus rho naught times tau times I. <coughs> 
Again, the transmitted light is equal to the original intensity minus the reflected light. And we take this tau term and plug in 1 minus rho naught times the exponent of negative kx, where in this case x is equal to the thickness of the polymer, d. Finally, this allows us to calculate the total light transmitted. The infinite sum of transmitted rays becomes this equation. The sum of it equals 1 minus rho naught squared times the exponent of negative kd over 1 minus rho naught squared times the exponent of negative 2kd times the initial intensity i. Together, that's equal to tau, the light uh, fraction, light transmission fraction, times the initial intensity of the light. This equation represents the total light transmitted through the material after all reflections, internal reflections, and absorption. We can also calculate the total reflected light. The total reflected light is equal to rho times the initial intensity, where rho is the fraction of light reflected from all um, transmissions of light from the original surface. This is equal to rho naught times 1 plus tau times the exponent of negative kd times the initial intensity of light. We can also determine the total light absorbed. The total light absorbed is the sum of i a, which is equal to alpha times i, which is equal to 1 minus tau minus rho times i where tau is the coefficient of transmission of light and rho is the coefficient of reflected light. So as absorption increases, we notice that, well, let me back up. So let's assume we have a light intensity that ranges from a scale of 0 to 1 on the top of this graph. A certain proportion of the light will be reflected. In this case, we're saying rho naught is equal to 0.05, or about 5% of the light intensity is reflected. As the sample becomes increasingly thick, this is known as the dimensionless thickness, Kd, we see that the transmission initially is, makes up 95% of the light intensity. But as the sample becomes thicker, more and more light is absorbed until at a very high thickness, all of the light is absorbed. As the absorption increases, more energy must be dissipated as heat. This is why materials that don't transmit light or are not transparent tend to heat up. High energy light, for example ultraviolet light, is absorbed can lead to degradation of polymers by chain scission. In other words, because ultraviolet light can be absorbed by the polymer, that energy is then transmitted into breaking of the individual polymer chains, which can degrade the properties of the polymer. You may have seen polymers turn yellow in the sunlight. This is a classic example of ultraviolet radiation degradation of a polymer. The previous analysis assumed that the angle of incidence, theta sub i, was equal to zero degrees. At other angles, more light is lost to reflection. And you've experienced this in your present day life. If you put a light at an angle to a surface, it tends to reflect more light than if the light is directly above the surface. So here we see the reflection losses, which are typically around 5% at low angles of incidence, but it can increase dramatically close to 100% when we have an angle of incidence.